The listener is just as important as the storyteller. In fact, you could argue that if someone tells a story without a listener, or telling a story at all, or you can have to go back to the dreams, uh, situation. So, uh, the other thing about story that we've seen is that it's transformational to tell a story. It's equally transformational to listen, to really take in the stories of others. So this is something that I'm going to talk more about in the context of the Griots of Oakland project. So for the Griots of Oakland, um, the format of this project, which is the methodology of Story for All, is that we brought together a group of African-American young men, all high school students, from different parts of Oakland. And they went through a six-month training where they learned oral history and videography, about a million other things um, designed to help, you know, really boost self-esteem and uh, professionalism and really get them ready to go out there and collect the stories of their community. So after this training, that's exactly what they did. They went out and conducted 100 peer-to-peer -peer interviews with 100 other young men um, in all different corners of Oakland. And then after those interviews were collected, we sort of assimilated what we had learned through the process and then created a book, which you'll see over there, um, a large museum exhibit, of which this little pop-up is just a little piece of, uh, and then a series of videos with the goal of taking these voices and these stories and these images of these young men that we had spoken to and reflecting it back out to the community in a way that was, first of all, authentic and honored these young men, and secondly, created a positive narrative <coughs> about black men in Oakland. Because I'm sure as everyone in this room knows, there isn't enough of that. <laughs> and there's actually a great deal of positive activity happening. And regardless of what's happening on the streets, these are beautiful, strong, brilliant, and amazing young men. And they deserve to be seen and portrayed in that light. So this is overall the goal of the project. So how did, it, how did it kind of pan out? Um, I'm going to tell you about a couple of the young men who are in our project because I think it's a good sort of case study for what's going on for these young men. Um, the first one I want to tell you about is a young man named Zach. And Zach is a 15-year-old when he joined our program, and he was extremely enthusiastic. <laughs> he was definitely, you know, ready to be in the program, and he really wanted to use a video camera, and he was really excited to conduct his first interview, and he just brought such great positive energy to the group. Um, so one week, he didn't show up for class, and we were concerned. It wasn't like him. So we called his cell phone, and he picked up right away, but his voice was very flat. He didn't sound like Zach. Is that what's going on? So I'm not going to be frustrated. Zach, what, you know, what's going on? So finally we were able to get it out of him. And what he told us is that earlier that day, his best friend, who lives down the street from him, was walking to Zach's house, but he never made it. And Zach said, they chased him. They chased him down the street, and when he fell down, they stood over him and they shot him nine times. He was just a few feet from my house. This is happening all too often here in this war zone that these young people are coming to age in. Now, I don't know about you all in this room, but the neighborhood where I grew up, I didn't know anyone who ever had been murdered. <laughs> no one I knew. I don't know anyone still to this day, personally, who's been murdered, let alone in front of my house, let alone in front of my eyes. So I can't. The only way that I can really comprehend what this young man is going through is to listen respectfully to his experience, right? That's the only way I can even begin to come to grips with this. And once I begin to hear these stories and really take them in, I am impelled to take action. I mean, this is kind of what's happening for me on a real personal level. I'm beginning for the first time to really see what's happening right around the corner of me. I spent many years working my way around the world, interviewing people, hearing people's stories from all walks of life. I thought that I understood just some inkling of what's happening in this world. I had no idea what was happening right around the corner. So I come back to Oakland 
And these young men are generous enough to tell me what is happening for them. And I hope that they felt that we all were generous enough to actually listen. So this is the goal of Story for All. The goal of Story for All and the goal of this project in particular is to create that safe space where people can speak their truth, tell their stories, be listened to with respect, and then we can take their stories and with honor and respect put them back out to the community and show them the stories in a way that they can actually take them in and hopefully walk away with a changed perception. So the very specific goal of this project was to create a positive narrative about young men of color so that we change the perception of how these young men, first of all, perceive themselves, and then secondly, are perceived by others, and therefore, so that the correct policies and systems are in place to actually support these young men. So it's a big job. <laughs> Um, we got we got a lot of work to do, uh, but I'm extremely committed, and um, it's working. It's really working. When we gave these young men a chance to tell their stories, right away we could see self-esteem go up. They felt empowered. They felt valued. I can't tell you how many of these young men came to me and said, "No one ever asked me to tell my story before. No one ever listens to me. My teacher doesn't listen to me. No one ever listens to me." So just letting them speak, just asking them questions, and being there to hear their extremely intelligent answers, that in itself was a revolutionary act for too many of these young people. And then secondly, putting it out to the community. Again, when people came to our exhibit, I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said, I've never seen someone who looks like me portrayed in this way. This is so beautiful. I feel hope. This is what we're trying to do. And because of the impact that we have, we saw here in Oakland, we're now replicating this project to bring it around the country, to, to cities around the country, and this is an initiative called The Shine. And we call it The Shine because we want to see these young men shine. They are shining! That's the thing. They are shining. We just need to make sure that they know, that we know that they're shining, and that that's the message we put back out there in the world to... Um, Tell people about what's really truly going on and let these young men speak for themselves and be heard as we dismantle institutionalized racism in this country and really create an equal playing field where these boys, like every other boy in this country, has the right to shine. So I invite you to, um, you know, learn more about what it is that we're doing and if nothing else, just be aware. Be aware of your power as a storyteller and also as a listener, how much that means, whether it's your black neighbor or your granddaughter or whomever it is, when they have a story to tell, listen to them. <laughs> tell them a story. You might be amazed at what comes to it. And if you'd like to hear more about our work, please come see us over here at the end of the program.